Hi friends, hi family, hello world. It's Christy here, AKA Aquara Chris. And today I'm gonna to talk about what is meditation and what it is not. Regardless of your experience with meditation, this video will be helpful for you. So I invite you to open your mind and listen. Please know that everything I'm about to say is experience-based and comes from my heart. So regardless if you have a daily meditation practice already, or if you do it here and there and it's a challenge to fit it in your busy life, or maybe you've done it once or twice in the past, but for whatever reason it didn't resonate with you, or maybe you've been really wanting to try it, but you're like, I can't sit still and not think and not move and not do anything. <laughs> well, let me tell you that meditation isn't that. It's not what you think it is. It's more than what you think it is. Meditation is not just the typical Tibetan Buddhist monk sitting practice chanting. <laughs> Although that is a very lovely form of meditation, it's not the only way. Meditation is not the cessation of all thoughts. There are many different forms of meditation. The point of meditation is to calm the monkey mind. And the monkey mind is our incessant inner chatter, our repetitive, just go, go, go mentality, all these thoughts moving in and out of our minds all day long, day in, day out. Um, they can be negative, self-limiting, even self-deprecating our egos. So meditation is there to allow us to connect to our essence, to our soul, to spirit, our body, mind, heart, soul, and spirit on a really deep level and to collect our thoughts and emotions, not rid ourselves of them, to center, to collect, to calm, to respond and not react to integrate a sense of wellness into our everyday lives, to heal negative belief systems, heal trauma, transform negative energy, to honor the shadow in us, to become more aligned with our souls, who always know best than our minds or our hearts, our souls, to align with our soul, to align with spirit, to deepen our intuition, to, it's like you are creating a toolkit for mental and emotional resilience. So the many different forms of meditation include contemplation, which is thinking really hard and long about something uh, in as much of a neutral state of mind as possible and not acting on anything. There's visualization, you know, it's like a creative mental vision board, a fantasy kind of dreamland, it puts you in a meditative state. There's reflection, which is processing our thoughts and emotions, um, you know, writing things down in a journal, uh, recording your thoughts and emotions out loud, perhaps in a voice memo on your phone. I do that a lot. Self mantra medicine, uh, which is just, you know, reciting mantras, affirmations. There's ritual and ceremony. There's spiritual mind treatment which is a form of affirmative prayer. However, I will leave out prayer intentionally, and the reason why is a topic for a whole other video, which I will make. Um, I have a lot of insight on how meditation and prayer differentiate, and prayer is a lovely practice. I try to use it as much as possible in my own practice. 
but I could talk about this for the next 10 minutes and I don't want to digress. So staying on topic, affirmative prayer, mantra work, affirmations, these are techniques that basically function as sound vibrations, uh, speech, anything that we are saying is the energy is being put out there by the law of attraction, even the law of repulsion, the law of cause and effect, these karmic laws of the universe. And we're setting the stage for healing, manifestation, transformation with our thoughts and our words, especially when we speak our words, not just think our words in our emotions, but um, when we actually say them out loud because with the right intention words sounds create vibration and then you are affirming that to the universe and that holds a tremendous amount of weight we have to be co-creators with spirit the power of spirit or God or whatever you want to call it already exists in ourselves so with meditation, we tap into that, that source, that power. It channels through us with our existence, with our being. So we've covered that you can think because mental and emotional health is all about processing. You can uh, talk because sounds or vibrations you can also move you don't need to sit still there are so many different mudras but you can also like sway with the energy you can do some chakra balancing you can dance with kundalini you can ecstatic dance you can move and sway and just kind of move do tai chi qigong <laughs> Whatever it is, like you can move, feel free to move, to dance with that auric field, to radiate the energy outwards, you're bringing it in, it's like a, a play, you know? So you don't need to sit still, although the stillness is lovely, and after a while, you can incorporate some of that stillness, but it doesn't need to be all stillness, you can play and dance and make it fun, make it yours. Feel free to move. It's like we're setting intentions, we're releasing, we're playing with the field of potential. So when we use all these forms of meditation to process our thoughts and emotions, to collect, to reflect, and to affirm the worthiness, the happiness, the light and the love, the success that we already have in our lives, the more we do it, the more it becomes in our nature. And yes, it's really important to set aside time to have a daily meditation practice where you do bring yourself into the stillness. It's not always all thinking or all processing or affirming or dancing or all these things I've just listed, but yeah, it is helpful to get into that gray matter part of your brain after an hour of meditation. But if you are doing all of these other modalities of meditation, you're sort of making it into an everyday, all day practice. It's becoming more ingrained in your being, in your nature, to have a cool, calm, and collected outlook to be able to reach down to these skills, to your inner power, to use in your everyday life. If we make meditation a regular practice, we become spiritual warriors. And we stop worrying about what everyone else is doing and about the chaos of society. So we're not Buddhist monks sitting at the top of a mountain, renouncing everything. We have to interact with society, and society is 
very dark. Uh, there's fear, anxiety, stress, greed. Our egos get involved. Our shadow self is lurking in the corner. And meditation is a way to have a healthy perspective and to have the strength and the endurance to power through the chaos. We have to find a way to interact with all of these forces of darkness. And when we meditate and we deepen our spiritual practice and our quest for self-discovery and our self-love, we have a strong skill set of mental and emotional endurance and we can reach to that at any time and we have faith at that point because we can't always control the situation you know and life gives us so many obstacles and so many challenges but it's the way that we deal with these obstacles and challenges and the way that we handle stress that makes all the difference. The greater the obstacle or challenge, the greater the opportunity of light to bring to the situation. And when we make meditation a daily practice, not just a sitting practice, but a lifestyle, a mindset, we have so much power of healing transformation and manifestation and connection to spirit. And that's all you need to get through life. When we can know what that tool looks like, we can pull it out more often and we can use it in more scenarios. So when we are being succumbed to reactive behavior, negativity, when we're having a serious ego breakdown, our meditative state will be our saving grace. Our connection with soul will be our saving grace because soul knows best. And the more you meditate, the more you're tapping into your inner power, the more that you're strengthening your intuition, and the more that you're allowing your soul to take charge because it's all relative and it's all related. And it's your power to claim. It's your mental and emotional freedom. It's your expression. It's your mental and emotional health. Like I said, it's not the cessation of all thoughts because we're not gonna suppress anything. We have to fully feel, fully process, fully reflect, fully heal, fully transform, and fully manifest. And meditation serves the purpose to let all of these things fall into place. So, with that, I invite you to rethink meditation. To allow yourself to think and to feel and to move and to play with spirit because it runs through and it is you. To dance, to operate on the cusp of the seen and the unseen, to, you know, if you have a strong negative emotion, don't suppress it. Fully process it during meditation. Have a journal, start recording voice memos, you know, read and write and record, 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 record. And, you know, then, so like what I like to do a lot is I will, so I get all these spiritual downloads and I channel spirit in my higher self. And I don't want to focus on like writing because then that kind of puts the energy kind of a little bit outward. So I like to take that energy in and be still. But I'll set a voice memo on my phone and just talk, soul talk, fluid talk. And it just channels right through me. And then I have a record of it. 
and I'll name it on my phone. I have a bunch of them. They're like, you know, virtual journal entries, <laughs> spiritual channeling. And then I'll listen to them later while meditating. So it's really just like a good practice to integrate, you know, all your thoughts and emotions as much as you can because we're all human and there's no such thing as enlightenment. You know, enlightenment is not the end all goal. The end all goal is to keep learning. You don't just become enlightened. You don't just ascend and then you're done. I don't believe in that. It's a constant cycle. It's a constant process. And as people who live in society, we have a gift to, instead of going out and living on a wonderful monastery, I'm so jealous. <laughs> I am so thankful that I get to live in society and deal with all the shit of society, but shine my light the brightest because I'm constantly challenged. I'm constantly put in situations that are stressful. I have to deal with my shadow self a lot. I have ego shit that comes up, people to deal with. You know, it's like all these things help you improve, help you reach deeper and gain a, a holistic perspective of mental and emotional and spiritual health. And I'm all about taking the lessons and the light and the love from the divine realm, from the astral realm, and bring it down into the physical and not just staying out there and using what I've learned in my everyday life, in my everyday normal American citizen <laughs> societal life with politics and religion and oppression. I really love choosing this path and yeah I just I don't believe in enlightenment you can become enlightened but it's not a permanent state of mind you have to work at it and the more you meditate the more often you have enlightening experiences but it's a constant struggle. It's a constant journey. It's a constant process. So with that, I love you guys. Thank you so much for listening and for sticking in there. And look out for the next video I'm going to be doing about prayer versus meditation because I have a ton of insight about that and um, I really wanted to get into it, but it would make this video too long and I didn't want to go out on a tangent. So, um, yeah, I hope you have a lovely day or night or whatever time it is that you're watching this video and be well. Namaste. Namaste.